Good afternoon, traders. It's uh, Patrick Munley here with the weekly live analysis session. I um, just want to do a quick audio check. If you can see my screen, and uh, you should be able to see a tick mill, we want traders to succeed um, slide. If you can hear me, can you type a Y in the chat box just to let me know? We're all in sync. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so um, before we get going, obviously, as usual, we want to uh, quickly pay some attention to the risk disclaimer. We obviously all know that uh, trading is a, uh, a risky endeavor. But as I always say, having a plan and adhering to that plan and managing your risk uh, mitigates a lot of the genuine risk that, uh, that is in the markets. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Patrick Munley. I have uh, been trading professionally for, uh, well, professionally since 2008. I was actually in the markets uh, from 2004, 2005. Um, I'd, uh, I'd exited a consulting startup, had a bunch, a bunch of capital and started trading myself. Um, had some early success and then is, as is often the case, I uh, experienced uh, a significant drawdown um, losing a, a big chunk of cash and it was at that point I uh, decided to get serious about um, trading as a business. I sought out a mentor, worked with that mentor to uh, to develop a trade plan. I thoroughly back tested it, forward tested it and then I came to the market again at the beginning of 2008 um, in not dissimilar circumstances to what we're, uh, we're currently experiencing now but through that period I, I managed to navigate those markets by adhering to my, my trade plan and risk management strategy. And ultimately, um, since 2008, on an annual basis, I've, um, I've been profitable. And really, that's where my focus is in terms of uh, my performance. I'm not interested or concerned by the outcomes of individual trades. What I'm really focused on is, is not the next 10 trades, but the next 100 trades. And over those 100 trades, I'm looking for um, my trade plan, and my strategy is to deliver uh, their, their edge in the market. And that's really where I, I put my focus from a performance perspective. Um, since 2013, I've actually been managing external investor capital through a managed account service. And again, uh, that service has been profitable on an annual basis. And um, more recently, I've obviously uh, joined Tickmill as their uh, market expert in residence. and um, Another role that I've also took on over the past 12 months is I'm actually the head of trading and trader education for an emerging online uh, trader education service called fxcareerswap.com, whereby we work with emerging retail trading talent to not only deliver a solid uh, practical education and strategies, but uh, we also then um, move forward with those who are successful in um, in develop in their development to uh, to provide a, a funded trading account um, for graduates of that program, and um, and then they can grow that account over time on a performance related basis, obviously. So those are uh, a bunch of the things that, are, that I'm involved in. First and foremost, I'm a trader, and um, I have I've, I've basically moved to the stage now where. Most of my, um, my trading in terms of execution is on an end of day basis. So I've got a, a bunch of time um, during the day. I obviously want to keep my, my finger on the pulse of the market in terms of managing my, my exposure, et cetera. But I, um, I really am working in more of a mental capacity um, during the days and my, my trading, like I say, <laughs> is mainly done at the end of day. Um, so without, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's move into to what I want to talk about today. Um, again, I'm going to, to walk you through the, the major markets that I'm, I'm watching and um, deconstruct and see where the, where the opportunities might be emerging. I'll, I'll walk you through some of the positions that I've got on at the moment that I share with the guys on the Trade Pro program for FX Career Swap. Um, and then I'll uh, take any questions you might have or if there are any markets you want me to take a look at um, that I'm not going to cover in the in the presentation and I'm happy to, to do that. So um, what I want to start off with is just again, um, I think I shared this slide with you guys last week, but just really to update you in terms of where we're, where we're at now. Um, 
The, this is the 20-year seasonal chart of the dollar index. Now, obviously, the dollar is the major component in terms of um, foreign exchange trading. And so we always want to be cognizant of where the dollar index is. Um, the, I, I, this is the, the, the broader basket of um, the dollar versus um, six other currencies. Um, but this, this really is giving you a gauge of, of, of sentiment within the market. Now, over the past 20 years, the dollar has, um, on average, seen a peak in and around the end of March. And from that peak, it's traded lower pretty much into to the beginning of, of May. That's, on, that's an average over the 20, 20 years. Now, um, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that occurs. And you can, uh, you can Google uh, Forex seasonality. And, um, and there's a, an abundance of articles on the internet that will explain the rationale. But seasonality is something that I want to, um, to always be aware of. Um, not necessarily that I'm going to initiate a trade based purely on seasonality. But if one of my strategies gives me a setter where, that, that um, coincides with uh, one of these um, seasonal swing points, then I want to pay attention to that because that trade setup may offer me the opportunity to um, increase or maximize potential returns. So instead of going for one and a half or two times my risk in terms of my reward for a trade, where I get a, a synchronicity with my one of my strategies giving me a signal and this seasonality, then I might hold on to that trade or try and ride that trade for you know maybe five, seven, or, or, or ten times um, risk rewards. So I want to just to just to give you a heads up that the dollar is is moving into a period of seasonal weakness. So if your strategies are starting to flash um, dollar shorting opportunities, then you should uh, you should certainly be paying attention to those. Now there's one fly in the ointment, and this fly in the ointment is specifically related to the, uh, the market meltdown that we've witnessed um, over the past. Uh, few weeks with respect to coronavirus and um, and it's covered the, the, the guys that I, I share these these trading notes this is from the, the JP Morgan dealing desk in London this information isn't readily available to retail traders but I share it with the, the guys in my team and um, we know that there are there are some significant issues with respect to liquidity at the moment simply because a lot of these trading teams are dispersed and they're not trading off their trading from their desks um, and so we want to to be aware of the fact that because of, um, of the, the, the dislocation we've seen in markets, there is likely to be a move into the dollar at the end of this month. And it's more, um, it's more related to, this is a, a note here from the Goldman Sachs um, flow desk. This is big pension funds in the US are basically having to rebalance and uh, rebalance their books and potentially buy up to $214 billion worth of US equities. Now you'll see here, this is a note from Citi, this is their um, quant desk, that this, this rebalancing is a strong signal that, this, that the asset rebalancing is, suggests that there is going to be a move into the dollar into month end. So if you've got a dollar position on come Tuesday, certainly around the London fix, which is 4 p.m. UK time, you want you can expect to see some volatility in the dollar crosses in the do, sorry in the dollar majors and dollar crosses so this is something again that not um, you know the average retail trader isn't necessarily aware of but in terms of my mindset and how i use this information i'm thinking to myself well i want to make sure that if i'm in a dollar trade heading into that period that that trade is risk free and secondly, if I do get these dollar shorting signals um, heading into month end, then I'm, I'm, once we get this rebalancing flow out of the way, it's likely then that we will see um, the potential for the dollar to ease once these rebalancing flows have gone through. So if I'm getting signals Monday or Tuesday, I'm, I, what I'm likely to do is hold off on executing those trades until we get through that, that London fix on Tuesday at 4 p.m. So this is just an aspect of market dynamic that you want to be aware of. Because what, what, I, what, what you don't want to do is you put a position on Monday night, um, you know, with a, with a short setup for the dollar, and then you find that you're in a trade that's in and around your, your entry level. 
And because of this flow dynamic that we're likely to see on Tuesday, the dollar spikes, takes you out of your position, and then once this flow has, has moved through the market and has been absorbed, it, will, it reverses very quickly and then goes in favor of your trade after stopping you out. So this is just an additional um, risk strategy that you want to be aware of as we head into um, Tuesday and Tuesday afternoon in these, uh, in these major dollar pairs. So with that said, let's, uh, let's jump into the charts and um, take a look at, uh, at the dollar index. Um, what we've seen obviously is a, an impulsive move to the upside. Uh, we, we came just shy of challenging the 2017 highs in the dollar and, um, and we've seen a pullback. Now this pullback at the moment has corrective qualities and we have just um, completed as of this morning the equidistant swing. So um, if we think in terms of Elliott wave, I'll just put this in for you for those who, who follow along. Um, we've got an A, a B and a C leg, quality leg into uh, or just ahead of these prior highs. And we're seeing a bit of a, a bid come in here um, just, uh, just in the last uh, couple of hours in the dollar. This is a four hour chart. So in terms of um, the setup at the moment, if, if, I, if, if, as I anticipate that we're going to see this, this, this dollar squeeze, there's the potential here that we will actually make one more high here in the dollar index, take out those 2017 highs, um, and then maybe we get, uh, we get the reversal signal. So this is one scenario that I'm tracking at the moment and I'm watching the price action. Uh, again, at the moment, there's no confirmation, but certainly we're seeing that initial reaction from the market here as we trade into to the equality leg. These red lines are Fibonacci time, um, time, retra time retracements. So basically what this is telling us is that um, at this level here, this equates to 38.2% of the time that it took for this impulse wave to occur. Most corrections are going to occur or complete in between the 38.2% and the 61.8% time retracement. This is something obviously we covered in the educational sessions, but just highlighting it to you now. So we've got uh, we've got the dollar index trading in back into these the break breakout highs. We've got an equality setup um, in terms of the correction and we're in and around the minimum requirements from a time perspective for this correction to complete. So we've got some criteria there that we, that we want to pay attention to and certainly then We've been watching the price action for a confirmation um, for a potential trade on the long side to uh, to see this dollar potentially uh, make spike highs here heading into um, Tuesday. Now, um, if we take it, if we if we if we on a closing basis, if we take out this level, then the next area of interest is going to be back down here towards the 98.90 level. And technically, still at this stage, because of this leg trend is still bullish and this is you know the, the overlapping nature of the price action we're here uh, we're seeing here would suggest that this is this price action we're seeing at the moment is corrected so we could trade back up into this channel high and then still see another leg lower um, to test this support and even at this stage from a technical perspective the chart um, still has a it's still bullish and that could be setting up the next next leg of the upside in the dollar Okay, so what would what would tell me that um, that this that the, the correction is complete? Well, we need to take out at this stage the minimum this trend line um, resistance that we've got here uh, to to suggest that we've got confirmation that th th there's a potential or a higher probability that the correction is complete and we're going to get the spike into uh, into a new high here into that month end time frame, which will coincide with the 20 year seasonality. So those are some of the, um, the levels that I'm watching in the dollar index. Uh, obviously that feeds into the euro. We've got the euro uh, just falling shy of testing its equality level. And again, at the moment, because of the nature of this decline um, being impulsive, uh, what, we, what we have to um, logically expect is that the current price action is corrected. Now, Again, if we think about the nature of the, of the dynamic of the current market environment, where even you know the guys on the JP Morgan desk is saying that you know whilst they've still got an eye on technicals, 
the majority of what we're seeing at the moment is very much flow driven. So we see it because the markets are, uh, are less liquid than normal, we're seeing these the swing generation is just being driven simply by flow. So whilst we're paying attention to the technicals, we also want to be cognizant of these broader market themes. We've got liquidity issues. We've got a move into the dollar that may see uh, that may be exaggerated into month end because of the rebalancing flows. So these are all dynamics you want to be aware of above and beyond the technical setups. So. With the euro at the moment, what I've been looking for is, um, is a test of this equality level, um, looking at the stocks above 110. If we get up there, um, I would suggest if we don't get a reversal signal as per um, the set of the, the, the strategy, let me uh, just go on to another chart here because you can't see the... Let's just go to... This is the daily. I'm going to take this onto the four hour, but this will just give you a better idea in terms of signal. So what we're looking for now, so we have um, we've got this as an A, B, C. We're trading up into the volatility resistance bands. This uh, this is the the higher time frame VWAP is also still bearish. So if we get a reversal signal in here. Then that would qualify as, as a short setup in, in the euro. Um, equally, what we've got is, um, let me just change these. We also have, if we overlay this last swing into the high and bring that down here, you can see we get some additional confirmation in and around this level. Then if we bring in our fib retracement tool again, so we've got a cluster here between um, this 110, 11060, uh, 11060 being the 50% retracement. And then if we want to get in, bring in uh, time zone. So you can see we're just about heading up here into that minimum time requirement, which is the 38.2% retracement of this decline. So certainly we want to pay attention um, as we head into this evening and and tomorrow to see if uh, see if this euro is trading in around this this reversal zone this one one ten one ten sixty um, would be an area certainly of interest. And then just above there we've got one ten seventy seven is the is the weekly R one level. Um, so we want to to see how we how we react in and around that area um, if we get a, a bearish reversal. So as per my this this swing strategy. What I'd be looking for, or what would characterize a, a trigger in terms of a trading opportunity, would be as we trade into this area, I'd be looking for a red candle that, um, that is tested into this volatility resistance band. Okay. Now, in terms of taking this trade, once I get in, or once I, if I get a signal, the first area I'd be looking at to, to cover my risk would be um, a symmetry swing with this last corrective phase that we saw here. So any pullback like so, that's where I'd want to, you know, I'd want to be covering my risk there because the potential is that we, we could set up a third push higher to test this um, 161 extension of this, um, of this AV leg. So th those are the areas that I would be paying attention to. This is obviously if you're trading on the intraday charts, um, 110.60, uh, what, what, sorry, 110 to 110.60 in and tomorrow morning heading into the London Open uh, would be the area of interest in the euro. Let's go back to these clearer charts. It's just, I, I was just showing you the other so you can see the actual signal pattern, um, which would be the red candle. So these candles are colored um, as per the, the trend. Uh, this is a near term volume weighted average price. So when price is above that level, regardless of whether or not it's a bullish or bearish candle, uh, the, it, it, will, it, will, it will actually um, color the candle green if it's above and red if it's below. And so what I'm looking for when we trade into the, um, the, the potential price reversal zone is for that, that signal to, um, to initiate a trade. So let's go back to, that's, so that's we've covered the euro. And here's this symmetry swing idea that I've referenced in, on the other chart. We get a pullback, and then there's still the potential of one more leg higher 
which again would still technically um, classify this as a, as a correction, as a corrective pattern because it, because of the overlapping nature of the price action. But realistically, by the time we get up here, um, it's more likely that we're going to be in a more complex pattern that, uh, that could play out as opposed to um, immediately seeing a resumption of the trend to the downside. So sterling, similar scenario here with sterling. What we're looking at is uh, ABC corrective pattern. We've got a target at 122.08. Um, we've got the weekly R1 coming in there. And, um, and obviously because of the, the, the scale of the decline we saw in the euro, we're well below the, um, the monthly uh, pivots at this stage. But certainly we've got the weekly R1 and, um, and we've got this equidistant swing objective at 122.08. So whilst we're holding um, above the central tendency here, certainly in terms of the volatility, bands then price can obviously generate here but whilst we hold above this 117.50 then the target for now would be a move up into this this 122 area and then again the market will be into a decision point and we'll see if, if the seller if sellers re-emerge and we see a trend continuation pattern but certainly what we can do at these areas and again using this is the four hour chart if we get that four hour signal um then you can uh, you can actually certainly get into a position and very quickly get it to, to risk free so if we're trading up into this 122 we get a reversal candle confirmation then you know you can get from 122 back into this 120 area these prior highs and certainly want to be risk free by then and then you'll see if you're if you've got a, a you know a trend continuation um play on the cards so that's uh, that's what i'm looking at in sterling dollar yen is uh, is pulling back and what I'm looking for now is for this pivot here at the 109.20 uh, to 109 level, we've got the weekly pivot, the monthly pivot. So if we pull back into this area and a buyer step in again, what I'm looking for again, because we've come just shy of retesting these prior highs. And there'll be uh, undoubtedly a bunch of stops sitting just above there. So if, we, if this pullback um, can complete in and around this 109, level then i still see the potential again for for one more leg higher to take out these stops and then potentially set up a more meaningful reversal so in terms of um the, the pattern I, i've got here whilst we hold this 109 um, we still can see just one more high in a blowout move and again you've got to think that would broadly coincide with the um the dollar index making its new high so you can see if the if, if this if the dollar yen and the dollar index are both going to hold here, then we certainly see the potential for that one more high before a likely fade in terms of uh, in terms of both of those instruments. Aussie, um, looking for the Aussie to to test now into the quality target. We've got a potential three pushes pattern here. Um, more often than not, that proves corrective and terminal for a correction. We've also got the uh, retesting the monthly S2 from below, and we've got the confluence here with the, the weekly R1, and we've got the daily R3. So if we, if 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 today we can see a, a run higher or into into tomorrow certainly in the Aussie, then any reversal signals, and again this four-hour chart um, on four-hour time scale, you could uh, you could certainly look at um, getting into to a short position there. And again, symmetry swing targets initially to, to get your risk off the table and then see if, uh, see if the trend is likely to, to persist. Because as we know at the moment, the dominant trend has been this dollar strength, but we're cognizant of the fact that after these month end flows go through and certainly heading into next week, we might see some, some more sustained dollar weakness, which could, like I say, mean that we see more complex corrective patterns in uh, some of these dollar pairs. So similar story here in the loony, let's just, see where we are so we've got our a b so we've got a c target down here at 140.33 again at this stage that would this would prove a corrective pattern and suggest we have the potential to actually make new highs um we'll have to see once we trade down into this this area let's also just bring in the fib retracement and see what we've got so we've got the 50 percent just below there um if we look at the so this is the march so if we, if we fit the march move um you get some confidence there so 
watching 140 30 area as a uh, potential reversal zone for the Aussie. Swissy is sitting right on the uh, trend line support at the moment, <laughs> but given the fact the dollar index has broken the trend line support, I would anticipate that uh, the, the Swissy is going to do the same. Then we've got this equality objective at uh, 96.60. Um, 38.2% inflation sitting just below. So we could see a pop there um, from that area to basically retest this uh, broken trend line support from below. You can see we've got these symmetry swings that we can use. So if we get down into this area and we retest this from below, um, we could get a, a, another sell signal there in the Swissy. But we want to pay attention to the also as we head into next week, and certainly you want to pull these charts up on on Tuesday to see where you're at from, from a monthly candle perspective. Obviously, we've had um, pretty strong moves in most of these dollar dollar majors, but let's see where we close on the month um, for additional confirmations. But certainly at, at this stage, looking for the Swissy to test this 96.60 area. Kiwi, similar to the Aussie, obviously, is, is looking now to test its... Uh, one second, wrong tool. So we have uh, but the potential now for the Kiwi to actually trade up into this, this prior um, price spike level here at the 60 cents level. So we've got, uh, we've got this. This would be the quality swing here. Let's, uh, let's also bring in the fib retracements. So yeah, what I've been looking for here is for this Kiwi to, to make a move into this area. And then again, it's going to be a decision point for the Kiwi. Um, what I'd be looking for on any pullback at this stage would be simply to track the symmetry swing and see where that leads us. So again, there is the potential that we could see a more complex correction play out here in terms of the Kiwi. But certainly area of interest if you're looking at, at short positions in this, will be this 60 to 60, <coughs> 50 area. Um, again, using that, uh, using the, the core swing strategy to, um, to look at short opportunities. Uh, S&P 500, so we've had this initial impulse move off the lows. Um, we've corrected overnight. We haven't quite tested the 50% uh, the retracement area yet. Um, certainly, I'd be looking for um, if we do get into this area for for longs, I think we've got uh, we've got our initial panic low in place now, as I talked about last week. And what we've been looking for is a symmetry move now. I think we can get up and retest um, into this resistance at the 2750, 2800 area. And then again, um, as is as is the case with with many of these markets at the moment, we're going to be at a pretty pivotal decision point because if the sellers step back in here, then um, if we go to the daily, I'll just pull up the daily chart here one second just so I can show you. So, I mean, if the sellers are going to, if the sellers re emerge in at that 2750, 2800 area, which we've got these prior prior lows on the way into the cycle high, then the potential for, um, for these equity markets is that we, uh, you know, we could grind meaningfully lower. Um, Let's just draw in. So if we do get up into this zone, let's use these prior lines here as the initial target. Then, um, then we've got targets on the downside if the sellers do emerge here to uh, to just as low as, as 1600 in what would be just a standard correction of um, of, of the ABCD variety. Oh, sorry, of the ABC uh, Elliott Wave variety. Um, now, like I said earlier about these uh, these monthly charts, you do want to pay attention to. And this is one that I've been uh, been highlighting. So can we close back above the monthly 11-year bull trend uh, trend line? Because if we do, that's going to uh, th that means that technically, on a closing basis, the trend is still intact to the upside. And that can uh, it can certainly cause some panic for portfolio managers in terms of chasing performance 
if they feel that their final load is in place. Now, <coughs> what, what dynamic is going to support that? Well, I, I guess it's fairly obvious for most of you. We'd certainly want to see a, uh, a, a vaccine or a, or a cure for, for coronavirus. If we, if we, if that was, you know, if that is announced, and um, and we can start to see a decline in terms of the cases, um, both in mortality and infection. And you know, certainly some of these economies are opening back up. If China continues to um, to see uh, a recovery, then you know, all bets are off to the downside, and we could be uh, this could be a runaway move um, to the upside. But now, as I say to to the guys I work with, you know. That's getting ahead of ourselves. What we want to do is take it step by step. You know, apply the the, the analytics that um, that we know work, and and start to see where where the setups are. So for now, um, looking at uh, looking at some support here to develop in and around um, this 2370 area for the next leg of at this stage. All it is is a correction. And again, these bear market rallies can be vicious. You know, we see that a pretty decent washout there of shorts. Now, obviously, there's been some selling pressure yesterday. We've got this big stimulus bill due to pass um, in the US tomorrow, uh, the final vote. You know, I think we could see a bit of a, uh, this, this being a buy the rumor, sell the fact type scenario once it does actually pass. Um, and we see, a, you know, a slightly deeper pullback. But again, at this juncture, um, one would, well, one can logically conclude that this is the first leg, and we should see a second leg higher into, like I say, this this resistance area, where again we'll get another market decision point, and we'll see, um, you know, do 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 the sellers step back in again. Okay, so that's the S and P gold. Gold looks like it's going to complete a, a bullish sequence here. We should see a move up into uh, the 1650 area. And um, and once we are there, sorry guys, I'm getting some audio feedback. Um, if you've got a microphone, if you can mute it, that would be great. Okay, so um, gold, I'm looking for another high here, and then I think we could see a, a pullback um, to test these this prior resistance as support in the 1550 area, and from there. Um, we could see a, you know another leg higher and ultimately take out the prior price swing highs. So watching for a, a move to you know, in the coming session into the 1650. This correction could be driven by um, you know that idea that we're going to see some some late month uh, dollar strength. So we get a pullback and then once we get into Wednesday uh, and into April. Then we could well see a, another meaningful leg higher in gold, and certainly with all this liquidity flooding the markets from central banks, um, a natural place for um, for big capital to hide out is in gold. And um, and so we've seen the washout. This, this is a similar pattern that we saw in 2008-2009 when the when the equity indexes started rolling over. Uh, gold also took a dive because the, the the dynamic in the market is that. Guys who are running big profits in gold were getting margin calls on their equity portfolios, and to cover those, they were having to sell gold, liquidate gold positions to fund the, the, the cash shortage they had in their in their equity uh, portfolios. So um, this pullback, if it's driven by this this, this dollar push into to month end, um, certainly at this stage, whilst we hold this 1550, we could definitely uh, we could definitely see another leg higher here in gold. Um, maybe certainly testing up into that, that 1740, 1750 area would be the next logical objective to the upside. Crude oil, um, still struggling here. And um, let's see, we've, we've got a gap here, a big gap. Now, these price gaps tend to occur in the most impulsive wave of a pattern. So we can still logically conclude that this, is the, that this move to down here was actually the third wave. Of this um, this uh, crude oil collapse, and so that would mean that whilst we hold these highs, this is our, our, our three four here. So we should still see another low in crude oil. Now, um, if we you know just using uh, the quality metric here, so if we the last leg is equal to the first leg, then that would um, that put us down in the sixteen dollars area, um, getting pretty close there to that twelve dollar. 
Saudi um, break even on, on crude. So I'll be, I'm going to be watching crude. I think uh, if we can get a final flush out here and, and test down towards the, the $12 area where we know that, um, that the Saudis are going to be under pressure, then I think that it's from there that we can see a very meaningful bounce in crude oil. So um, that's one to watch. Uh, finally, I've got the Singapore dollar here. This is a position I've got on at the moment. I'll just walk you through that so you can get a sense of uh, US dollar, Singapore daily. So this is a position uh, that I'm running at the moment. We uh, we had our, our setup with a uh, bearish engulfing rejection candle. We had sentiment divergence and we had the RSI stochastic rolling over and then we got yesterday we got this lovely little inside candle which um, which helps us in terms of improving our risk reward when we're looking at uh, when we're looking at on these positions because what we're able to do the, um, overnight is put a, a, a sell stop in place one tick below the low of the inside candle with a stop a few ticks above the higher bit and um and now we've got triggered into the trade this morning singapore unfortunately have had an uptick in um cases in terms of coronavirus they've also enacted another 40 billion dollars worth singapore dollars of, of stimulus the second stimulus package so um we're seeing some pressure in the sing dollar here what's also noteworthy in terms of um, in terms of this level and i've again highlighted this to the, the guys in the team that um if we go out to the weekly chart we can see that we're sitting here at a major potential double top. And what, what, what do we also notice here is that, um, that once again, we've got our old friend divergence at play and, um, and we're seeing a pretty sharp reversal here. So um, initially my target on this is, is back down to, um, to these prior break points here. So that give me four times risk reward, but let's see where we close on this weekly candle because um, there's the potential here that we actually are putting in a, a meaningful weekly reversal pattern to we'll see where the RSI stochastic goes. But certainly this, this sentiment rejection uh, in terms of the, the divergence adds, um, adds credence to this, this short, and this is the weekly time frame. Uh, we've had a good month trading the same dollar because we've also got a bullish signal here. And again, I shared this um, with the guys in the team, took about 230 pips out of this, but um, the bullish reversal, into the uh the correction zone and um and we took off to the upside and now again we're having another uh another profitable excursion in the in the singapore dollar um and again those those <coughs> that the, these trades are shared in in real time um, with the guys in the chat i do try to put them on trading view as well as as, as much as possible that I've got a, a lot, uh, a lot on at the moment, so I'll try and update them as uh, as regularly as I can. But again, like I say, in uh, in our trade pro, this is FX Career Swap. Um, with our strategies, <clears throat> we also have the team chat, whereby that's where I share all the uh, the information with respect to um, institutional updates and trading desk updates. I share charts um, and relevant market information to to basically. Um, arm the guys in the team with as much information as possible uh, to to help in their profitability. Okay, guys, that um, that's pretty much where I'm up to at the moment. Are there um, are there any questions at this stage? Or does anyone have a chart they want me to look at that I haven't covered? Um, I'm happy to uh, to do that. I've got a couple of minutes here. Um, let's see if I can pull up the. Any questions, guys? Any charts you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered? You can uh, you can type the chart name into the chat if you want to, and I'll uh, I'm happy to look through. Again, if you are interested in the um, Trade Pro program, you can enter your you, you can use this link. I'll put it into the chat and. Um, you can uh, register in your interest and, uh, and one of the team will, will be in touch. Um, GBP, JPY. Okay. Let's go here. Let's 
So yeah, I mean the you know we've got a potential double bottom scenario here, um, but the monthly VWAP is bearish. So again, what I've been looking at at this stage, and again, this you know if we think about the the position that I talked about the, the pound being in, um, we're just shy. We, we haven't really uh, tested the 50% retracement of the entire decline. And take it to the swing low. We've just fallen short as well. Um, if we go to the four-hour chart, what we want to see or, or, or look at is do we have uh, an ABCD or an ABC? If we edit it away. So let's uh, let's bring in this tool. So we've got a bit of work to do there on the upside to to get the the minimum requirements in terms of the ABCD. Uh, we'd be looking at 135.33. Let's see what else we've got the prior X1 there. Uh, we've got the 50% retracement, 134.30. So if, 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 if you're looking at this on the short side, then this is the, the window, this, this price window here at 135 is where you, you want to pay attention. And then obviously you're looking for the, for the confirmations. I, as, again, as, as probably as most of you know by now, I don't trade just play, a vanilla level strike. I'm looking for, for a price confirmation um, to uh, to engage the market. So this would be my area of interest, and then I'd be looking for uh, a bearish reversal pattern to um, to develop. But for now, uh, again, I'm broadly in line with the, the the move we're seeing in the in the in the uh, cable. Uh, we can expect uh, this to to move up to test this um, this resistance zone or potential resistance zone, I should say. <clears throat> you can see we've got a bit of a channel here as well. So up into th this area would um, would be of interest. Uh, Peter, could you show the Dow Jones? Let's see. I don't even think I have. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. So yeah, again, sim similar story really, Peter. To the um, let's see if I can get a better chart for this. One second. One second. I'm just trying to see. No, I'll do it on this one. Um, so, with respect to um, with respect to the Dow, it looks at this stage again. We've we've had that, those really shocking jobless claim numbers have just come out, and and at this point, you know, the market is being buoyed by the, the, the stimulus idea. So, you know, it looks at, at, until we get a you know an a a fifty percent correction at a minimum here, then this thing's still bullish at the moment and. You know, we could um, we could see this trade up here, and then get our pullback like so, and then um, and then see the second leg of correction. But I mean, it, at this point, you know, the move off the lows is impulsive. And so what you don't want to be doing at this stage is trying to fade this move because, you know, we've just been through, uh, you know, a forced liquidation event. And, you know, going back to the guys at Goldman, you know, we've got about $214 billion worth of, um, of potential inflow to, uh, to these equity markets. So <coughs> whilst we're... Certainly, I wouldn't be looking at this on the short side as of yet. And what I'd really be looking for is the first um, corrective pullback. Because um, I don't know if this is pricing in real time or is it end of day. Um, but what we could see here, Peter, is this scenario. So we could see a correction like so. But again, that correction, to my mind, at this stage is uh, is an opportunity to get back in on the long side. So I mean, I'm. I'm certain, you know, I, I'm whilst I whilst taking into account the you know the the, the likely second round effects that will come from uh, from coronavirus, and, and again, obviously the human cost is is horrific, and uh, you know my heart goes out to anyone who's uh, who's been affected by this. But just looking at it from from trading perspective, um, 
the the potential that I see at the moment is is certainly for you know this is this moves impulsive. We should see a correction that can that will also offer buying opportunity and broadly in line with the idea of um, of what I see happening in the the S and P. You know I'm looking for a, a you know a high, higher levels. Certainly what you know again just bringing in the the tool here. So you know the 50% is here. And you know we've got the weekly R3. Um, what I'm always looking for in terms of these corrections is an equality move. So um, A, B, C, or or A, B, C, D, whichever you want to, to refer to. That. But if we any pullbacks um, into this area, into the 50% really, are um, are buying opportunities for um, for another leg higher here, to my mind anyway. Does that make sense, Peter? Good stuff. Okay, I think uh, I think that pretty much covers uh, everything I wanted to, uh, to discuss with you today. So um, again, be cognizant of these rebalancing flows in terms of the market and the impact they can have in terms of volatility as we head into Tuesday. But um, as we get through Tuesday, I'm looking uh, for a more uh, sustained correction in the dollar, really. And obviously, I you know that's that's my perspective from an analytics um, point of view. But obviously, I'm not. I'm, I don't trade my analytical point of view. I'm trading the price action. So that's what I'm looking for. And then I'll see if price action confirms that. And if it does, then um, then obviously I'll be initiating trades um, in line with that view. But you know, I don't. You know, I don't. Like I said at the beginning here, I don't trade off seasonal patterns per se. Um, I don't trade off the flow per se. I'm very much focused on the price action. I have specific. Um, Technical strategies that I employ, and um, and that, they're the they're the ultimate arbiter of whether or not I'm going to engage the market. Okay. So uh, so on that note, I'll uh, I'll let you guys go. Thanks very much for your time, and um, we'll reconvene same time next week. Thanks very much, guys.